Welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the full build video of the Star Wars X-Wing fighter from Ravel in 1 to 112th scale. As you can see here this is the level 3 version. It is a snap tight kit which means it doesn't need gluing but it does suggest paints as you can see there on the back and it comes with water slide decals. But it's exactly the same tooling as the Easy Kit Pocket. Please don't forget to like, click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and hit the bell icon to stay notified for future builds. There's a really nice full colour manual here. It gives you information about what paints they recommend. Uh, there's a layout of all the sprues, and there you can see that it goes through in stages um, with colour callouts and also suggestions for the decals. The instructions and decals provided are for Luke Skywalker and R2-D2 in the Red 5 X-Wing from the original trilogy. And here is the decal sheet. It's quite nice, it gives you um, the reds, yellows, blacks, things like that. The colours are quite vibrant and it also gives you decals for R2-D2 and Luke's helmet. Here is the first sprue with the two wing sections here, which need to intersect. Here's the main fuselage as well as the turrets and uh, the pilot and astromech droid. And finally there is a very small clear sprue with two clear parts. The X-Wing fighter is arguably the most famous ship from the original Star Wars trilogy. As I'd already built Luke Skywalker's ship before, I chose to base this on Red 2, piloted by Wedge Antilles. I started by working on Wedge himself, the pilot here. By sticking the figure to a little bit of blue tack, as you can see here, it means that I don't have to touch the figure whilst I'm adding the paint. Used a bit of semi-gloss white and black for the helmet, vest and boots, gloss orange for the overalls, and a little bit of black and grey in places to add some detail. I chose to use white and gunmetal grey for his helmet. As the details are so small, the end of a toothpick can be really useful here. I then did his visor with a little bit of orange sharpie. I looked at examples of toys to compare the colours and markings of his ship to the ones supplied with the kit. The red stripes that go along the side weren't going to be long enough, so I used some Ravel red matte, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I'm not too worried about it being too smooth because these ships look pretty battle damaged. I then added the rear of the clear part into the back of the cockpit. Put the pilot's feet in first before putting his pin into the hole in the seat. And then it can be easily clipped into the uh, top of the fuselage. I should mention here that Ravel don't actually intend for you to paint the main part, the kind of pale grey of the bodywork at all, but instead to pick out the other details using various different shades of grey. Obviously if you wanted to you could use a very light grey for the bodywork. I decided to use the plastic that it came with. This meant that anywhere where I um, wasn't very careful with, I could simply get a toothpick or something similar to scratch off some of the uh, mess that I'd made, um, as that wouldn't damage the, uh, the bodywork of the model. Now this model should be able to be made without any glue whatsoever. However, I did decide to use a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin in some places just to make the uh, seam lines a little less obvious. It slots together very easily and I also added a little bit of glue to the join in the middle just to keep this as secure as possible. Now Wedge's ship has yellow in different places to Luke's ship so I used some uh, Humbrol matte yellow 
this kind of German yellow that you might see on uh, some of the Luftwaffe planes. Again, scratch off any mistakes. Now here you can see these markings are to designate the number. Red 5 becomes red 2. That means that you could use these to do any of the um, red 1 to 5 ships. They go on here on the top and the bottom of the wings. However, the outline of them is there, so you could paint this if you decided you didn't like the decals. Use a little bit of micro sole to help them adhere a little bit better. Again, I used a little bit of thin cement to glue the turrets onto the end of the wings. Now these decals here are supposed to go around parts of the turrets. However, you need to cut them very, very thin. And even when you do cut them to get rid of some of the carrier film, I found that they were too wide and too fiddly. So I decided just to leave them off. It was then time to put the fuselage together. It clips around the other part like this. I decided again to use a little bit of thin cement and clamped it for a little while just to secure it and, and minimise the uh, seams. There is a thin red band around the outside of these intakes here. It was now time to deal with the astromech droid. It comes with decals for R2-D2 as you can see here, however R2-3A was red so I didn't use the decals and painted him instead. I started by using semi-gloss white for uh, most of it and then did the head in the same matte red and added some details using silver. Pretty happy with how it turned out. The last decal to add to the body were these black vent stickers here. However, you could paint these instead if you wanted to. I left the decals for 24 hours and then gave it three coats of matte clear and added the rest of the canopy. I didn't use the canopy decal but instead went around the edge using some grey matte paint which I then chipped off any excess with the toothpick. If you're familiar with my builds you'll know that I don't really do much weathering. However, this needed to be weathered to look as realistic as possible. And I say that considering that is a completely fictional vehicle, but they all look pretty beaten up and battle scarred in the films. Started by using the Tamiya panel line accent and pretty much gave it a liberal washing. This was all done once the clear had had a day to cure. I also made sure to colour places that would definitely be a bit darker like the exhausts and also the parts of the turrets where those vent decals would have gone. Let this dry for a little while before moving on and also look out for any places you might have missed. Once it's dried use a little bit of thinner on the end of a cotton bud to wipe away some of the places to expose the colours underneath. Be gentle where decals have been applied as you can still dislodge them despite the clear coat. After I was happy with this, it was then time to add the astromech droid. Yes, you're right, this is a little bit small. However, both Ravel and Bandai do larger scale models of the X-Wing if you felt that this wasn't enough. However, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. All I could say is that it would be nice if there was some sort of display stand. And the astromech droid is still removable so you can pose it like that should you want to. Or even install him like this. So there we have it, something a little different from me this week. This is a really good value kit. Uh, it's a bit of fun. I built it in a couple of days. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. Let me know how you think I got on and I'll see you soon.